Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more new code today. So today let's solve the problem valid palindrome. I'm actually going to be solving this two different ways and I think both ways are definitely going to be helpful to know in an interview setting. Uh, before we start, I just want to quickly mention that this problem is actually a part of the blind 75 list of questions. And luckily we have actually solved the vast majority of the blind 75 questions. I even have a playlist of all of these questions in the description if you want to take a look. And of course, we will be finishing one more today, getting one step closer to 100% completion of blind 75. So we are given a string S. All we want to do is determine if it's a palindrome. Uh, if it is, we can return true. If it's not, we return false. Uh, only one catch is that we are only considering alphanumeric characters in the list and we are ignoring cases. By ignoring cases, they mean upper and lower case. So in the input string, you can see the leftmost character is capital A. The rightmost character is lowercase a. Both of these characters are considered the same. So if we had a string, an input string, like big A, lower A, this string itself is a palindrome. So we do return true. Even though one is uppercase and one is lowercase, we are ignoring the cases of the characters. Uh, and also when they say we're only considering alphanumeric characters, uh, basically it means we can ignore everything that's not an alphanumeric character. What is alphanumeric? Basically everything from uppercase A to uppercase Z, everything from lowercase A to lowercase Z, and everything from zero all the way to nine right? Every character and every digit. So basically in this input string, it might not look like a palindrome initially, but the answer is yes, true. It is a palindrome because, and actually before we even get into that, what is a palindrome if you don't remember? Well, basically the easiest way to check if a string is a palindrome is basically if it reads uh, the same way as it does when it is reversed, meaning if the string is the exact same even after it's been reversed. So for example, A, B, A, if we reverse this string, it's still ABA. So it is a palindrome, right? So, and let's take this string. If we reverse it, is it still the exact same? Basically, if we read it in reverse order and the answer is yes. Let's just compare a, a few characters initially. Let's start at the beginning, right? A, uh, and remember we're ignoring case. So when I say ignoring case, I'm just going to basically convert it to lowercase. So everything is just going to be lowercase. So we have an A. Okay. Next character is a space character, but remember we're only considering alphanumeric. So we don't even consider the space. We want to skip that space. So just delete it, right? Uh, the next character M, and then next character A, next character N. So we just took this from the beginning of the string, A man, right? So let's start at the end of the string. Uh, we have a lowercase a, right? And then we have a lowercase m, then we have a lowercase a, then we have lowercase n. So even starting at the end of the string, it looks like it's the same as the beginning when we read it in reverse. And it turns out that if we you know, take this string and remove all the spaces, all the special characters, and then convert everything else to lowercase, and then we reverse it, it will be the exact same string. And that's the approach I'm gonna be taking. I'm just gonna be removing, I'm gonna be filtering all the useless characters from this, keeping the characters that we want, and then converting them to lowercase, then reversing the string, and then checking if it's still equal. So now let's get into the coding solution, at least the first coding solution. Okay, so now let's code it up. And remember, we're gonna be building the new string, which is just gonna be removing all the non-alphanumeric characters from the input string. So this solution is kind of the cheating solution where I'm gonna be using a lot of built-in functions and extra memory as well. So we're gonna just iterate through every single character in the string S. If that character is alphanumerical, and the good thing is Python, and actually I think most uh, libraries, most languages like Java have a built-in function to check if a character or a string is alphanumerical, Python at least does. So we're checking if this character is alphanumerical. If it is, we want Want to include it in the new string. So we're going to go ahead and take that character and add it to the new string. But one thing you don't want to forget is we want to make sure that every character is lowercase. So before we add it to the new string, we want to make sure that it is lowercase. So we'll convert it to lowercase. And then we're done with that. We have the new string. We removed all the other characters from it. Now we just want to check if it is the exact same when it has been reversed. So we're just going to take this new string, compare it to the reversed string, which in Python you can do like this uh, by, you know, this is the syntax for reversing a string. So if they are equal, then we can return true. If they're not equal, this will return false. 
which is what we want to do to determine if it's a palindrome. So now let's run the code and make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does work. But there are some deficiencies with the solution that maybe your interviewer won't want you to use. Maybe they won't want you to use this alphanumerical function and they want you to implement it yourself. And maybe they don't want you to use extra memory. Clearly, we used extra memory by building the new string. And we actually used extra memory over here when we reversed the string. We created a new string that was the reversal of the original. So let's see how we can actually improve this solution. Okay, so now let's see how we can actually solve this problem with constant extra memory, without using extra memory, without creating a new version of this string. And the main way is gonna be by using pointers. So we're gonna have two pointers, a left pointer and a right pointer. Because remember, there are multiple ways to check if a string is a palindrome. We don't have to reverse it. We can just compare the left character and the rightmost character. If they're equal, then we shift the pointers in, the left pointer comes here and the right pointer goes here and then we can continue to check to make sure that the characters are equal if they're not equal then we return uh, but how do we know when to stop well we're going to keep uh, incrementing the left pointer and we're going to keep decrementing the right pointer until eventually they meet in the middle or the left pointer you know passes the right pointer right the left pointer becomes here and the right pointer is over here that's how we know when we can stop or maybe they will meet exactly at the same character if the length of the string happens to be odd. Okay, so that's actually pretty simple. Not too bad. So what are we going to do? Okay, left is here, right is here. This is capital A, but of course we're going to convert it to lowercase. This is lowercase a, so they're equal, right? Okay, so then right pointer is going to be decremented by one. So the right pointer is going to be over here at the M character. Left pointer is going to be incremented by one, and it's going to be here. Well, we're at the space character. But remember, we want to ignore spaces. We want to ignore everything except for alphanumerical characters. And can we try to do this without using a built-in function? Well, let me show you how we can kind of do that. Basically, I did some quick Googling, and we're actually going to use ASCII values to determine if a character is alphanumerical. Basically, what you need to know is that each symbol, uh, you know, ASCII symbols is 128 of them, and lowercase and uppercase English characters happen to have an ASCII value associated with them. You can see the integer 0 has an ASCII value associated 48. Uh, integer 1 has 49, integer 2 has 50, so they are contiguous all the way down to integer 9, which is at 57. So that's important. And we also have uppercase A uh, starting at 65, going all the way down uh, to 90. They are contiguous as well. And then eventually we can get to lowercase starting at 97, going all the way down to 122. These are contiguous as well. Using this information in pretty much every language, you can write your own alphanumerical uh, character detecting function. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But for now, just assume that we do have our own alphanumerical function and our left pointer is over here. What do we want to do? We don't really want to compare this character with the character M on the right side, do we? Because we want to skip this character. So how do we skip it? Well, we can create a while loop. So while our left pointer is not alphanumerical, then we're going to increment left, right? We're going to do left plus plus. We're going to keep incrementing left while it is not a alphanumerical character because we want to ignore uh, characters that are not alphanumeric. So we're going to increment left one more time. Now, luckily, it is a alphanumerical character. It's the character M. So we compare left and right. They're exactly the same. So we continue with our algorithm. We uh, decrement R over here, increment left over here. Right now they're both at the same character and we're gonna continue the algorithm. So that's the main idea. I won't run through this entire string because it's pretty long, but eventually the strings uh, will meet in the middle for example, over here somewhere, maybe at that point, we'll see, okay, they're at the same character. And then we'll say we can stop our algorithm. We've determined it is a palindrome and then we can return true. So now let me show you how to code it up. The benefit of this solution, it is still a linear time algorithm. It's still big O of N because we have to iterate through the entire string, but the memory complexity is big O of one because we're not using any extra memory in this case. Okay, so now let's get into the code. First thing I'm going to do is write our alpha numerical function. So it's going to take in a single parameter, just going to take in a character, and then we're going to determine if that character is alphanumeric or not. How can we determine that? Well, I was using the ASCII values a moment ago, right? I was talking about them. So in Python, you can get the ASCII value of a character uh, using the ORD function 
We just want to know that the ASCII value of this character, if it is an uppercase character, how can we check that? Well, as I showed you a moment ago, ASCII values are contiguous for uppercase characters, right? So from uppercase A to uppercase Z, uh, they're contiguous. So if the, the ASCII value of the C character, of whatever this character happens to be, is between the ASCII value of uppercase A and uppercase Z, that means it's an uppercase character. So that's good, good so far, right? That's progress. For now, we can check that this is an uppercase character, but we want to check if it's alphanumeric. So we have to extend this idea. So how about we say, okay, that or second condition... I'm actually just going to copy and paste this because it's going to be similar. We want to check if it's a lowercase character, right? Because that's the next thing. Is it uppercase or is it lowercase? We can do that by taking the ASCII values of the lowercase a and lowercase z. And last, it could be a digit from 0 to 1 or 0 to 9, actually. So let's do that same thing, right? Starting at 0, is it in between 0 or uh, the integer 9? If any of these is true, this will be true. So basically, we've determined if it's an alphanumeric or not. That will That's what this condition will be. So we can go ahead and return this. So if it is alphanumeric, of course, this will return true. If it's not alphanumeric, this will return false. Okay, so we got our helper function out of the way. Now let's actually write the algorithm. As I showed in the drawing, we're going to have two pointers left and right. Left is going to initially be at zero. Right is initially going to be all the way at the right side. So the length of the string minus one. And remember, we want to continue the algorithm. We want to check if it's a palindrome while the left pointer is less than the right pointer. The pointers have not met each other yet or crossed each other. And so now we get to the point where we actually want to compare the characters. So we want to take the character at position left and the character at position right. And if they're not equal, we want to return immediately, right? Because if we find a single pair that's not equal, then we know it's not a palindrome. So we can return false immediately. Uh, but did we forget about anything? Well, the first thing we forgot about is we want to make sure to only compare the lowercase versions of each character. So let's convert this to lower and convert this to lower. So that's good. We're, so if one of these is uppercase, one of them is lowercase, we're still good. But did we forget about anything else? Well, we never called our alphanumeric function, right? What if one of these is not an alphanumeric character? Well, we can't have that, right? We shouldn't allow that to happen. So before we even execute this if statement, let's make sure both characters at left and right are alphanumeric. So while it's not alphanumeric, so for example, while the character at position left is not alphanumeric, what do we want to do? Well, we want to increment that left pointer, right? So we can uh, plus one to this. Uh, but one thing we want to make sure is that the pointer never goes out of bounds. So let's just add a checks to make sure left is less than right, for example. This will make sure that, of course, it never passes the other pointer, and it'll also make sure that the pointer doesn't go out of bounds. And we want to make sure to do the exact same thing uh, for the other position as well, for the right pointer. So uh, make sure that right is greater than left, and uh, the character at the position right is uh, if it's not alphanumeric, then what do we want to do? We want to decrement the right pointer by one instead of incrementing. Uh, but but both of these while loops will make sure that both characters are alphanumeric before we do the comparison, which is what we wanted to achieve. So uh, then this will return false if it's not a palindrome. If the entire loop finishes, that must mean that the string is a palindrome. So then we can just go ahead and return true. Oh, and actually one more thing before I forget. Uh, after we do do the comparison, we want to update our left and right pointers, right? We want to compare the next position. So uh, to the left pointer, we're going to increment it by one. To the right pointer, we're going to decrement it by one. So just moving to the next position to do the next comparison on the next iteration of the while loop. So now this is the entire code. So let's just run it to make sure that it works. Okay, I was dumb. In Python, if you want to call another function inside of an object, you have to use the self keyword. So let's try that one more time. 
And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work, but it's actually slightly less efficient than the other solution, even though the big O time complexity is the exact same. Uh, and the memory complexity of this solution is actually better than the other one. This is no extra memory needed, as you can see. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.